Hey guys, in this video we're going to be finding the equations of motion for a projectile fired underwater, and as a result we will have to account for the resistance force due to drag. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is read out the question. So let's find the equation of motion of the bullet if it's fired with an initial velocity v0 at an angle theta from the horizontal. So this is the bullet just here, and it's fired with an initial velocity v0 at this angle just here. The water produces a resistance force proportional to and in the direction of the velocity of the bullet. So what does that mean? Well, let's actually draw what we think is the rough path for what this projectile looks like. The specifics aren't important. That's what we're trying to find out. Let's just draw what a path could be, right? And this is what it looks like in a little bit more detail. Let's guess something like that. And let's draw a bullet at some time t. Let's say the bullet's just here, okay? Well, we know that its velocity must be tangential to its path, right? So this is our velocity vector just here, right? We also know that there will be two forces acting on our bullet. We're going to have one force which will be mg acting downwards. So this is our only force so far. But we also need to account for a force due to drag, which is in the opposite direction of the velocity of the bullet. So it's going to be in this direction just here, right? So this is the direction of drag. But what is its magnitude? Well, it's proportional to the velocity of the bullet. So that means we can write this as kv, where k is our proportionality constant. So to reiter reiterate, we got two forces, mg and kv, in these directions shown. Okay. Now we're finally ready to start solving this problem. Remember, x and y have been defined as such, so we can actually superimpose this just here. This is going to be x just here, and this is going to be y. Let me make that a little bit clearer. This is going to be x, and that's going to be y just there. Now let's actually define an angle alpha just here. We know by trigonometry that this angle is also alpha. This will come into play soon, don't you worry. Now let's find the equation of motion in the x direction. Well, we know that the sum of forces, the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to m, your mass of your bullet, times by your acceleration of your bullet in the x direction, max. Now what are your forces in your x direction? Well, you've only got one. It's the component of your drag force in your x direction. So this is going to be minus kv cosine alpha. Why is it minus? It's because it's acting towards the left when x has been defined positively to the right, right? And this is going to be equal to m times ax, which is dvx dt. I hope that makes sense. Now, this isn't too useful to us because we've got v here, yet we've got v subscript x here. We need a way to reconcile this difference. And the way we do that is by realizing that our velocity vector can be expressed in terms of our horizontal velocity and our vertical velocity. And in particular, if you use a little bit of trigonometry just here, you know that v subscript x, our velocity in our x direction, is going to be v cosine alpha. This is the importance of defining alpha just here. We also know that v subscript y is equal to v sine alpha, but that'll come in handy later. Let's now substitute v cosine alpha into here, and what do we get? This will be minus kv subscript x is going to be equal to m dvx dt. Beautiful. If we bring the m over to the left-hand side and we bring vx over to the right-hand side, we'll be left with the integral of minus k on m dt is equal to the integral of 1 on vx dvx. Now we've all seen this before from high school, so I'll just zoom through this. This will be minus k on m t is equal to log of v subscript x plus our integrational constant. This is where our initial conditions really come in handy. We know that at t is equal to 0, in fact let me write this down, at t is equal to 0, we know that v subscript x, let's see, what was our initial velocity? It was v0 cosine theta, right? So we're basically saying when we started the experiment, our velocity in our x direction was v0 times cosine theta. It's the components of our initial velocity in the x direction. So what does that mean? Well, if you want to solve for, for c, what we need to do is we need to plug in this value. So let's do this to the right just here. We know that's going to be 0 on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we'll get log of v0 cosine theta, cosine theta plus c. 
Now we know that if you bring this over to the left hand side, then we can find C. So let me do this over here. This will be minus K on M T is equal to log of V subscript X plus C, which we just found out was negative log of V zero cosine theta. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm not jumping too many steps at once. I hope you can bear with me. All right, so let's get rid of this to make some space. Right? So what we're going to do now is we can simplify this side and we can write this as minus k on m minus k on m t t is going to be equal to log of v subscript x divided by v0 cosine theta. Right? Now we can exponential both sides to get vx the subject. So let's do this in one step. Let's exponential both sides and times v0 cosine theta by both sides. And what we're left with is v subscript x is equal to v0 cosine theta times e to the minus k on m t. Beautiful. Sadly, though, we're still not there. We've been asked to find the equation of motion, not the velocity profile. So it's in our interest to integrate once more. Recalling that v subscript x is equal to dx dt, we can integrate this once more. So we know that x is going to be equal to the integral of v0 cosine theta times e to the minus k on m t dt. Let's get rid of this to make some space. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we need to do now is integrate this. v0 and theta are constants. They're basically our initial conditions. So we can just integrate this right here and bring this outside the integral sign. Let's do this in one step. That'll be minus m on k, right? You integrate with the reciprocal just here, times by v0 cosine theta, cosine theta e to the minus k on mt, plus another integrational constant. Once again, this really highlights the importance of the initial conditions because we know at t is equal to zero, x is equal to zero. This is crucial. This is, this is really by definition. We've defined our x's to be here so that at t is equal to zero, x is equal to zero. This is purely so the equations will simplify out and be mathematically, you know, ideal, right? So let's see, let's, let's do this on the, on the right just here. This is x just here, I should say. This is x. Right, so let's see, let's plug, in, let's plug in this value. We know zero is gonna be on the left-hand side, and the right-hand side will have minus m on k v zero cosine theta times by this, which is one when t is equal to zero, plus c. So if you like, c is gonna be equal to the positive of this. And let's plug that all in, and we're gonna be left with x is gonna be equal to, let's see, it'll be, um, it'll be, m on k v0 cosine theta times by, I'm, I'm factoring this all in one go, I hope you can understand this, 1 minus e to the minus k on mt. I factorized this beast out of both of our terms, c and this term. Now I hope that makes sense. I know I've kind of jumped through the algebra, that's only because this is a really long problem and I kind of want to make the videos as short as possible. Okay, well, in, this is as far as I'll go in this first video. Um, watch my second video to understand how to derive the equation of motion in the y direction. I hope that made sense, guys.